Hi, this is Joel Persinger. I'm the Gun Guy. Thank you very much for watching Gun Guy TV and supporting me the way you do. I am very grateful that you do that. Please check out the Gun Guy TV Firearms Podcast. It is growing like crazy. You'll find it on your favorite podcast player, including iHeartRadio, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, and a few other places. And there is a link in the description. Uh, we also put a video version up on uh, various video platforms, too. Speaking of which, we are no longer prisoners of YouTube. You can find us on all of these locations as well. I do urge you to go subscribe to one, whether you use it or not. And that way, if something happens to us on YouTube, which is always possible, you'll be able to find us at any of those locations. We duplicate the channel completely in all of those other places. Okay, what I wanted to talk to you about today is the Nikon Spur. It's not a new optic, it's been out a while, but it's a very cool one. Nikon sent it to me, I'm going to say, wow, three or four months ago, I think. Probably, maybe maybe longer. And I, I've had it quite a while. I have mounted it on several different rifles. I haven't put it on any handguns. I put it on an AR. Let's see, I mounted it on, I don't know, three or four different things and tried the different things. And then I put it on this little PC carbine from Ruger, and it felt like it was designed to be there. So I left it there, and then I've gone out and used it a lot on this PC carbine, and it really fits this little rifle very well for a few reasons. Let me take the little cover off. By the way, it comes with a little cover, uh, which is really cool, by the way. Um, for a few reasons. One, it's the PC carbine is designed to be a light, handy little rifle. And as you probably already know, it breaks down and so on. It's a lot like having a 10-22 in 9mm, and it takes Glock mags, which is really kind of cool. Uh, but the fact that it's light and handy makes it an, a rifle you really don't want to put. It's, it's a pistol caliber carbine. You don't want to put this huge red dot on it. So the little micro red dot fits the rifle perfectly. I put it on there and fell in love with it right there. So I'm, I don't think it's coming off of there anytime soon. Let me give you the, I'll give you the technical stuff on the optic real quick because I know people want to know that. Uh, it does have the true color lens coating, which is I think a brand name of Nikon. I, I like Nikon stuff anyway, but the, I really like their true color representation because when you're looking through the optic, if you're shooting with both eyes open, you do get kind of a feeling that you don't have an optic at all. You're just seeing the red dot hanging there in space, and you put it on the target, press the trigger, and you hit the target. And it's not confusing because out of one eye, you're seeing a different color representation of what you're seeing out of the other one. I find that it really helps me in my both eyes open, quick access or quick acquisition type shooting. That may not affect you, but it, it does help me quite a bit, particularly as my eyes are getting older and older. It makes it quicker and easier for me to see and get on target. Likewise, that's one of the reasons why I do like the red dot sights, because as I get older, it's harder for me to focus on both the front sight and the rear sight. I tend to have a difficulty doing that. So I'm going more and more to optics of every kind and shape and size, because it just makes it easier for me to shoot. If you're in your 20s or 30s and you've got great eyes, it might not matter to you. But to me, it does. And then my, my son, I think, was born <laughs> wearing glasses, so it matters to him as well. All right, other technical stuff. Uh, it shuts itself off. It has an auto shut off, so if you forget to turn it off, I think it shuts itself off in 12 hours. It's got 10 brightness settings. See, i got to remember all this. The uh, first and second one are night vision compatible, so it'll work with your night vision. The other ones are variable stages of brightness. And I found it to be very bright. When you get up to that 8, 9, 10, it's extremely bright. What was really interesting is, although I had no trouble seeing the red dot, no matter what environment I was in, even out in the desert and on a very bright sunny day and like that, when I went to shoot video or shoot a picture of the dot so you could see it, the, when I was looking at bright objects, the camera couldn't see the red dot for some reason, so I had to point it at a, a little green bush there for you to be able to see it. But you can see the red dot is there, and then uh, I blurred the image a little bit to make the dot bigger for you so you could see it. I believe, if memory serves me correctly, it is a 3 MOA dot, but it, it's just about right. I mean, it's, it's really good for being accurate with it, too, so I like that. In fact, I took it to the rainbow range, and I put it on the bench, and I thought, well, I'll look and see if, how well I can shoot with it out to 75 yards, 100 yards, and like that. And I did, and you can see that I didn't have any trouble hitting what I was shooting at with it. It's really a very good little optic, even out to 75, 100 yards with a little carbine like this. It really makes the carbine very effective and pretty quick to get on target, even out at those distances. Uh, other things about it, they say the battery life is about 15,000 hours on a single battery continuous use. 
I have not checked that, so I don't know, but that's what they say. And then uh, it's also waterproof. So it's got the IPX7 waterproof rating. It's shock resistant and like that. And it's very stoutly built. I mean, it's a strong little optic. So I don't think you're going to have any trouble with it. I've thoroughly enjoyed having it on this little carbine. I took it out to the desert and uh, rang steel with it for, I don't know, as long as I could stand in the 107 degree heat and then go get a Gatorade and go back and shoot some more. And then I took some time hitting plays on some little target stands that were sent to me to review. Had a great time with that. In, in every way, I got to tell you, I really, really like the site. Now, here's one thing that you want to be aware of that I think I've given you all the technical specs, but this is just one thing. If you have a, this, this is really a home defense gun for my wife. This is my wife's PC carbine. And so I got to find out if she likes the sight. If she likes the sight, it's Stan. If she doesn't, we'll put something else on it. I'll be really surprised if she, if she says she doesn't like it. She hasn't tried it yet, but she does like red dots. However, it does not have an instant on. So if this is someplace where you got to snatch it real fast and defend yourself, it's not going to come on automatically. Truthfully, I prefer that because instant ons I've found burn battery life because every time somebody farts or sneezes next to it or it gets jostled a little bit, the optic comes on and eventually you pick it up and the optic's dead. So I like the ones that I have to turn on. The thing about them is when they're buttons, like this one has the two little buttons on the side to turn the optic on, turn the optic off, and adjust the intensity, oftentimes you have to hold the on button down for five seconds before it comes on, and you have to hold the off button off uh, down for five seconds before it goes off. Well, I don't mind the off, but when I need it to come on, I need it to come on right now. This one, you don't have to hold the button. You just have to push it until it clicks and the optic is on. Here's the other thing I like about the design. Even though the buttons are very small, they, they stick out quite a bit. So t from a feeling, you can feel it. When you stick your finger over the top of this thing, you can feel both of them. They're very easy to figure out which one's which. And if you don't remember in the heat of the moment, push one, push the other. If you click both, doesn't matter. You're going to get the right one and the optic's going to come right on. So I do like that. If you are like me and you don't like the instant on, this optic is really easy to get on and it's going to come on on the setting, the brightness setting that you left it on. It's not going to change. So whatever you set it for, that's where it's going to be. In general, I really like it. I've run it for months now, just so you know. I've, I've run it a lot and have no issues with it at all. The only issue that I, which is not an issue, I was just letting you know is that as a self-defense optic, it, you want to get in the habit of reaching over and just pushing one or both of those buttons one at a time, and that optic's going to come right on for you. So there you are. Uh, but if you pick it up, it's not going to come on automatically. If that's what you're looking for, this one doesn't do that. It does have the auto off. So there you are. There's the Nikon Spur. Great little optic. And if you've got something like a PC carbine or something, boy, I highly recommend it. It's just... it. it I got to tell you, put it on there, and it's almost like it was meant for this little carbine. So uh, I'm thinking about buying myself one of these, and I know my son wants one. So if my wife likes this optic, I'll be buying another one from I, uh, from uh, Nikon to put on there, or put on mine, because I, I really do like it. Thank you very much for watching. Have a wonderful week, and wherever you go, whatever you do, please be safe.